right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I hope y'all doing all right. Stay safe for protecting these times that we're in. I hope that y'all staying strong. You're going through it day by day, taking it day by day. I pray that if you didn't have the best day, I pray that you have better days coming towards your life. I pray that those around you are safe and protected as well. I hope your relationship with the Most High is getting better. And I just hope that you keep growing to where you're supposed to be, okay? Now, today I just have this church note in the email news subscribe list uh, from Jen DeLeon titled The Unfolding from Torre Roberts. And um, it's titled The Unfolding. And these church notes always come in time and handy and very clutch. I enjoy reading them, and I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all like to hear and listen to it as well because it's very relatable. Um, It's definitely situational. You know, many of us are battling so much different things all at once, and sometimes we don't really know how to express it enough thoroughly. Sometimes we keep holding it in or keep trying to hide it or what have you. But remember, God wants us to be free people. He wants us to be strong about our freedom and embracing things and Um, being able to share our experiences with others so that we can have testimonies and stories to tell so we give God so we could give God the glory for it you know what I mean so it's always important to never be shameful or feel a certain way about your situation because God can turn that around for a testimony and that could help someone you know what I mean because you never know how much people are going through the same situation as you none of us are lonely in this okay so what I'm going to do is read this church note, and hopefully it encourages you and bless you as well as you get through this week, okay? So here we go. The unfolding. Your life isn't going the way you thought it would because you're going after the wrong life. Have you ever had a plot twist, an unexpected challenge show up? In your story, there's unexpected challenges and unexpected blessings. We have to be careful not to make assumptions about our story because our perspective is based on our past and present, which means there's a degree of ignorance. Disappointment is evidence that we had an ignorant expectation, not ignorant in a negative way. You just did not have knowledge. There are two yous, the you that you are and the you that you're becoming. Anything someone doesn't understand, she, he has a judgment about. Don't be so quick to judge because you don't know what God is doing. I only do what I see my father do. I have learned the discipline to only do hear what I see the vision of me and my father do there. And that's why I'm powerful. There's a version of me and God that has glory. Worship is important. God wants you to look at his face so that you can see so that he can see you so that you can see you. You got to see you in order to be you. Sometimes we're wondering why our life doesn't have power. Your life does have power. It's just a different life. You can't be so quick to define your story because you're coming into your story. You don't really know your story. You know parts of it, and that's why you have to keep walking. You can't give up before you grow up. Not only are you a story, you are a word. All these little words we get are connected to the big word. There's this tension we're always living with, God hide, God hiding and, fi- and us finding. Don't be frustrated when you don't know, and when you can't see, that's how it's supposed to work. It's a divine game of hide and seek, and in the process of time, God is going to show you everything he had hid from you. <clears throat> God is going to deliver somebody from their preoccupation of sight. I will only believe it when I see it. God's glory is to hide it from you so you won't see it. You've got to search it and find it. It's not my job to see it. It's my job to produce it, and I produce it by going after it even though I don't see it. By the time you see it, you're too late. By the time it's manifest, by the time it's time to manifest, God is already on to the next thing. My relationship with God is strengthened by moving even though I don't see but I heard. God is trying to develop your most important sense into hear, to perceive. To perceive is better than seeing because sometimes you can't believe what you see. There's Photoshop, there's optics. God will send you micro words periodically that are breadcrumbs to the ultimate word of you. He doesn't give you the whole story. He gives it to you in a bite sizes because there's a development that takes place. And sometimes it's not that God has to get you ready. Sometimes God has to get the world around you ready for the story of you because he's managing all of that. We oftentimes don't honor the words God sends to us. You received it, but did you write it down? Have you rehearsed it? 
when God speaks a word to you, he's revealing you to you. We think we're, we're, we think we're being good. We think we're being good. Believe my bad, (laughs) y'all got a little tongue twisted. We think we're being good believers because we came to church, listened to church, took a note down. But when's the last time you rehearsed what he said? The reason you're acting crazy and don't know why you're acting crazy and you go to church is because you're not rehearsing the word. You're not meditating the word. God is trying to get you to the character of you, but you're not honoring the word by spending time on it. What was the last thing God said to you? And when is the last time you let us speak it back to you? God is giving you a mirror and he's saying from now on, this is how I want you to see yourself. And every time he gives you a word, he's adding more detail to the image. An imposter is being any less than who God says you are, who you are. Understand and embrace the necessity of mourning. Blessed are those who mourn because they'll be confer- they'll be comforted. In order to play your part, you're going to have to be willing to release things even if it causes you to mourn. You may have to mourn the death of what you thought your story would be. You have to make a decision. Is it going to be my story or God's story? God's story is better. Are you willing to mourn the loss of a relationship? Some people will sacrifice their purpose on the altar of a relationship because they're not willing to go through the difficult process of mourning a thing. The mourning won't last always. God, whatever I need to do to be who you're calling me to be, whatever I've got to release to be who you're calling me to be, wherever I've got to walk away in order to be what you're calling me to, whatever I need to say goodbye to, to be where you're calling me to be, No matter how long I have to cry to be in order who you're calling me to be, I'll do it because it's my story and in my story is my glory. I'm a divine word and I can't let nothing get in my way. Sometimes you've got to rebuke people that love you because sometimes people who love you will stop you from manifesting your story. Some of you need to mourn right now. I'm not going to call you anymore. I'm going to move away from that thing. As you're mourning, you're suing seed. The joy on the other side of your mourning is going to be so wonderful, so powerful that it will be worth every tear. God, I don't like it, but I must. God, I don't like it, but I recognize that's keeping me from me. Get ready to have a funeral and lay that thing down. Don't delay the mourning. The faster I mourn, the faster I can become comforted. How bad do you want it? There's only one story of me. You don't have two stories options. Either I'm me or I'm nothing. I either live out God's story for my life or nothing. And the last I checked, I wasn't nothing. Get you right. You thought you needed a word, not recognizing you are a word. And there you have it. Hmm. Very reflective church note. The unfolding, you know, like how it talks about, you know, getting out of our own way and really taking risks and becoming who God wants us to be and really accepting that calling, you know. And putting an end to those things, saying goodbye to those things, you know. What do we have to say goodbye to? What are we putting to an end, you know? We have to always reflect on those things and work on it, practice it, practice it and exercise it, okay? So, that's the church note, the unfolding, all right? Let's just stay, let's stay strong in these times that we're in. And let's always keep fighting the good fight, all right? Because things are... You know, prophecies unfolding like crazy. So let us keep moving in the spirit and keep trusting in God in the process as well. All right. So there y'all have it with that church note. Now, I just want to close out and just end it with all glory to the most high of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And praise to the son who passed away for our sins. All right. Who died for our sins. His blood was shed for us. So let's embrace that as we close out. All right. Here we go. Hallelujah. He is the Adam, the Advocate, the Almighty, the Alpha and Omega. Amen. The Apostle of our profession, the Arm of the Lord, the Atonement Sacrifice for our sins, the Author and Finisher of our faith, the Author and Perfecter of our faith, the Author of life, the Author of salvation, the beginning and the end, the beginning of the creation of God, the Beloved Son, the Blessed and Only Potentate, the Blessed and Only Ruler, the Branch, the bread of God, the bread of life, the bridegroom, the capstone, the captain of salvation, the chief cornerstone, the the chief shepherd, the Christ, the Christ of God, the consolation of Israel, the cornerstone, the counselor, the creator, the dayspring, the deliverer, the desire of the nations, the door, the elect of God, Emmanuel, 
the eternal life, the everlasting father, the faith and true witness, faithful and true, the faithful witness, the first and last, the first begotten, the firstborn from the dead, the firstborn over all creation, the forerunner, the gate, the glory of the Lord, God, the good shepherd, the great high priest, the great shepherd, the head of the church, the heir of all things, the high priest, the holy and true, the holy one, the hope, the hope of glory, the horn of salvation, the I am, the image of God, Jehovah, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus, the judge of Israel, the judge, the king eternal, the king of Israel, the king of kings and Lord of lords, the king of the saints, the king of the ages, the king of the Jews, the king, the lamb, the lamb of God, the lamb without blemish, the last Adam, the lawgiver, the leader and commander, the life, the life of the world, the line of the tribe of Judah, the living one, the living stone, the Lord, the Lord, Yah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh, Shai, Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, Ahai, Yeshaya, Yeshua, Shalom, Shalom, Barakatha, our righteousness, Lord of all, Lord of glory, Lord of lords, man from heaven, man of sorrows, mediator of the new covenant, the mediator, the messenger of the covenant, the Messiah, the mighty God, the mighty one, the morning star, the Nazarene, the offspring of David, the only begotten son of God, our great God, a savior, our holiness, our spiritual husband, our Passover, our protection, our redemption, our righteousness, our sacrifice, Passover lamb, power of God, the precious cornerstone, the prince of kings, the prince of life, the prince of peace, the prophet, the redeemer, the resurrection and life, the righteous branch, the righteous one, the rock, the root of David, the rose of Sharon, the ruler of God's creation, the ruler of the kings of the earth, the savior, the seed of woman, the shepherd and bishop of souls, the Shiloh, the son of David, the son of God, the son of man, the son of the blessed, the son of the most high God, the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, the son of righteousness, the just one, the one mediator, the stone the builders rejected, the true bread, the true God, the true light, the true vine, the way to truth and life, the wisdom of God, the witness, the wonderful counselor, the word, the word of God, the word of life, the word. Hallelujah. Amen. He is definitely the, the, the wonderful counselor. Uh, praise to the most high of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And praise to the son that died for our sins. So there y'all have it. Just a church note. Just want to keep it light or simple. You know, late Sunday night. Heading into the new week. So I pray to God that whoever listens to this message, I pray that you get baptized. So you start your life off for the Lord. I pray that these coming days are better for you and that you progress and go into, grow into the direction you're supposed to be. I pray that your health is better. I pray that your finances are better. I pray that your situation around you gets better. I pray that you can help people and comfort them as well in these times that we're in. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I got much love for y'all. God bless y'all. Peace.